Builders! Builders! Gather around me. Listen to what I have to say. I want to build a castle. I want to build a huge castle. A magnificent castle. A tall, wide castle. But, but not too wide. A, li a little bit thin, maybe. And small. I don't want to go too high. You know, I get dizzy with heights. And I want a cellar. But no, I, I don't want a cellar. I want a tall, small, huge building with a cellar that doesn't have a cellar. Build me that. But, but, sir, that's not possible. What do you mean, not possible? It's possible. King Richard had it done. No, he built, he built three castles. Well, then you have to build me several castles. You, go out there and build me a castle. And you, build me another castle. And you, build me a castle now. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I am Richard. Today I'm going to be talking to you about Between Two Castles. This is a game from Stonemaier Games. It's a two to seven player games. I think it plays best above two players, but you can play two players. There are special rules for that. Today I'm going to be open the box and show you what's in this box, and then I'm going to go through the gaming. Well, let's open the box. So like I said, this is a game from Stonemaier Games. Uh, and they corroborate with baser games on this one called the new classics and it's a it's like i said you can play two game two players with this one but it's made for three to seven players uh, and there we have the the box opening and here we come to the the instructions the gameplay itself on this one it's it's pretty basic it's it's not that complicated actually but when it comes to keeping score and who actually won, that's where it gets a little bit more complicated. I think this is a nice rule book. You have, I don't know, like vinyl paper almost. It's, it's have a really nice feel to it. You can hear the vinyl scratching there. Beautiful art, good pictures. Uh, these are the scoring pages. Every room has to be connected to a certain kind of room to score the most. I'm going to get into that a little bit more later. Here you have the room tiles. And there's a bunch of different rooms on this one. There's uh, great foyers, there's the throne room, there's there's all kinds of different rooms. There's, there's wine cellars, there's food uh, kitchens, there's living rooms and a bunch of different, a bunch of different rooms. Draw art rooms. You have food rooms. You have. You also have corridors. These are. This are the back sides of them. So these here that looks like these. These are the common rooms that you will need to work with your partner sitting next to you to figure out how to best build your castle. And like I said in the intro, that's that's the hard part because. You have to score the most, but the person sitting next to you also wants to score the most. So you have to try to plan beforehand which room you want to focus on and get the most out of. There's another one here. And these ones that you see here, these are not rooms. These are kind of like assistants that you can put in the throne room to give you extra scores. And you have a little scoring paper here, a, a bunch of them actually, it's, it's quite thick. You can play a lot of games with this one, and it's two-sided, so there's a lot of gaming here. And here you have the, the assistance card, I would call it. This is where you can see which room you can place where, and a little bit of tips if it goes above ground, below ground. Also, what kind of room does what and how it scores. So each player gets one of these to just be able to keep track of the game. And in this one you have, you have the small castle. And there's seven different of these ones. Small wooden castles. There's a blue one. Every one of these castles represents a real castle in real life. It's 
pretty cool. So each player has to pick their own little little castle and what it wants to what they want it to look like. Oh, there was another one. Almost forgot that one. And here we have the bonus cards. Because as you progress through the game and as you build your castle, you will get different kind of bonuses. Extra little bag. And these are the the containers to keep the rooms in order on the board or on the on the table when you start playing. So this is where you organize all of these different rooms during play. And you have two of these, one small and one a little bit bigger. This is this is just ordinary thin plastic. This is, I wouldn't call this out of the ordinary. Uh, I would call this pretty, pretty basic. But still, it's a cool feature. I mean, it's a cool way to just keep all the rooms organized during your gameplay. But now I'm going to show you a little bit how to, how the, how the game sets up and how you actually play the game. Okay, people, so this is the setup. Once you've done it a couple of times, this one goes quite fast to set up. To start with, you should shuffle the throne rooms. You should put one throne room between each player. Then you give out the eight cards. These eight, car eight cards are the ones that I told you about before. These are the ones that shows the different rooms. They shows the different scorings. They show where you can put the room. You can see here some rooms have to be above ground. Other rooms have to be below ground. So these ones are actually just a, a cheat screen. Uh, card I would say so you can just keep track of the game and then you have the big compartments here these are the common rooms the the different rooms where you will have uh, when you build the castle itself in the big compartment here you have the throne rooms that you do not use in this game then you have the special rooms you have the tower you have the grand foyer you have the fountain. These rooms should not be shuffled in with the rest of the common rooms. They should be put down here separately in this compartment here, in the yellow compartment. And then you have the attendants. These are the ones that I called assistants before, but they're called attendants. Uh, and these are workers that you can put in your castle to get different kinds of bonuses as long as you go along in the game. And then you have the bonus cards. These ones should be shuffled. And then they should be placed in this compartment here. So the setup is quite basic. And oh, also you get the small castles here that you put out under each throne room. So the setup here is quite easy. As I said, it goes quite fast. Once you just pop everything out and just put it in the compartments, well, you're really ready to go. But let, let's like a, take a look on the actual gameplay and how the gameplay works. Okay, so gameplay itself, it's not that complicated. First of all, the gameplay is two rounds. The first round starts with each player picking nine tiles from the common room. And they can choose whichever compartment they want here. Nine tiles, nine tiles, nine tiles. First, they have to choose secretly, without discussing anything with their neighbors, which two rooms they want to choose. So from these nine tiles, you secretly choose two rooms. Once you've done that, you put them face down on the table. The same thing here, chooses two rooms, put them face down on the table, and two rooms face down on the table. Once you've done choosing, you take the remaining tiles, and put them to your left. That's the first phase. Once this is done, you can reveal the rooms you have chosen. Each player re reveals the rooms. Now you can freely discuss 
which room you want to put in which castle. Me, for example, I want to put the archery range to my left. And I want to put the laboratory to my right. Now, this is a downstairs room, which means that I can't put it above the throne room. I have to put it in the basement, below the throne room. This has to be right below. I can't put it in the side next to it because, well, there's no way to get into the room. But it has to be connected directly under the throne room. My partner up here to the left wants to give the buttery to this castle and wants to put the promenade in this castle. This player here also wants to put a hall of sculptures in this castle and wants to put a game storage in this castle. Once you've done this, and of course, like I said before, you can freely discuss how you want to place the rooms, whichever you think fits the need the best. So once this step is over, you repeat. You take up the remaining tiles that you got from your late neighbor to the right. You secretly choose two tiles, put the remaining tiles to your left. This player will do the same thing, choose two tiles, Put the remaining tiles to his or her left. And likewise, this one does the same. Picks two tiles and sends on the rest to me. And then we repeat it again. We reveal the rooms. And again, we are free to discuss however we want to put these rooms in our castles. Like I said before, it's important to notice that some of these rooms are downstairs rooms. Some of these stair rooms are above ground level. Again, this means that the spy room can only be placed below the throne room. And for example, the mud room here can only be placed above ground level and you of course have to place this above a room so you can't place this here because well gravity it's gonna fall down there's nothing to carry it you have to place it above another room and you can build these rooms how high and how wide you want to as long as there is support underneath so the building will won't collapse this is the easy part of the game and when these, car when these tiles are done, when you have finished all these rounds and there are no tiles left to choose from, that's where you go on, on to round two. Round two is exactly the same as round number one, except that now you put the remaining tiles to your right instead of your left. So now we go clockwise instead. And when this is done, the game is basically over and you need to keep score. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. Let's take a look at scoring. Okay, so now you have played the two rounds and you have constructed your castle. You are done. And now it's time to calculate what you have actually scored. And keeping score and kind of following a strategic line here to get as much, much points as possible is the bit that is kind of tricky in this game. Because each room has a specific room type, type that it wants to be next to. You have, for example, the, the wine room. This room gets two points for each sleeping room that is above or below this room. Which makes sense because when you had some wine, you might want to go to sleep. So as you see, the wine, wine room I have here is connected to the sleeping room above and below. Which means that this room will give me two plus two points. A four point total. Then you also have bonuses. Every time you get three of the same type of room, you get a specific bonus for that specific room. You have the living rooms, for example. Every time you have three living rooms in your castle, you get to place an attendant. These ones, for example. So if you pick these armor types attendants, you get one point for every 
armor room you have in your castle. These attendants should be placed in the throne room. Which means that you can have two attendants at the maximum. The next attendant you can get is not from the living room, that is from a downstairs bonus. And in this rule book you see here, you can read about the dip different types of bonuses. Each room type has its own bonus, so I won't go through them all. I think you should have the joy of making that one up yourself. There's a lot of fun things in this game and there's a lot of beautiful artwork in it. All the rooms are completely unique. You won't find the same one. You won't find the same bonus. You won't find the same room types. I mean, you got cat rooms in here. You got painting rooms. You have fungus rooms. You have all kinds of different rooms that each scores differently depending on where you place them in the castle. So it's a good thing to keep this one in hand as it will give you a lot of tips and tricks on how to create the castle. And then like I showed you in the start you have the score board here and this is where you write down what you have actually scored in the end. So for example like I showed you before the wine room that scored two points due to the sleeping rooms above and below I would put in four rooms uh, four points on the food room and as you have calculated all of these rooms in the end of the round, well, you will find out who have scored what and who will actually win the game. So there you have it, people. That was Between Two Castles from Stonemaier Games. I think this game is fun, it's challenging, but at the same time, it's kind of easy gameplay. And it's found fun for the whole family and with friends. And I also love the fact that you have to work together, but at the same time, you have to keep a focus on your strategies to get the most points and the best scores that you possibly can because you have to calculate the score from one castle and the other castle and put them together to get your results so you can't just calculate one castle and then you're done no you have to combine the two of them which really challenge you to work together but at the same time be kind of selfish so i like this game i think it's really fun check it out if you want to Next week, I'm going to be talking to you about the game Overboss, which is a cool video game influenced game. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, press the thumbs up if you like the video, and see you next time.